Hey guys, it's Red Lobster, and today what I have for you is the Diamond Fire server. Now, I don't play on any server very much at all. Uh, sometimes I hop on Hypixel and the Hive and whatnot, just because there's people on there that I enjoy playing with, but this server is something 100% unique to any server I've ever been on, and it's something so original that I thought I'd like to share with you guys. So we're gonna hop straight into why I think this server is so amazing, and it's essentially the premise that we have behind the entire server. Now, in the hotbar, what we have are a bunch of items that say search, all games, quick play, create new plots, and my plots. And what that means is that we can go straight into plots to make a mini game, right? And each player can make their own mini game, depending on you know how uh, creative they are. The game will be even better. So once you click on your plot, which mine is pocket-sized RPG we have three different modes. We have the play mode, we have the build mode, and the code mode. Now the play mode is of course what you click if you're somebody else wanting to uh, join the game and play the minigame, of course. And then build mode is something that only you or the people you add to your build team can do, which is of course build the minigame with you, uh, physically just the blocks and whatnots inside of your 50 by 50 grid. And then code is essentially the simplified command block version of how to do stuff that involves zero command block knowledge. Now essentially, once we click on this and then click on play, we spawn in this little uh, hub, right? And this hub is essentially where you can put everything you want, such as the rules or whatnot of the game. Mine, of course, has this custom message that says, Welcome to the pocket-sized RPG created by YouTuber Red Nomster, which is me, of course. And you can customize that message however you'd like, or not even have a message. It's completely up to you, but it's all done within the code as well that involves zero command blocks. So it says, Jump in a lava to begin your adventure which he of course just did, some random dude, <laughs> and then many RPG playthrough friends made by me of course. So once we jump in, we'll essentially spawn in the town center, town square, it's more of a circle I suppose, uh, of the map. And what I have here are just a few houses, a beautiful little landscape, and of course it's going to be a pocket sized RPG, so it's going to work somewhat like Zelda in the sense where you'd walk through these areas and then you go to a new area that isn't the town square or if you go inside of these buildings they're going to be uh working off of illusions in a sense where the inside is much larger than the outside now the way i'm going to be pulling off these illusions are with teleport commands and the various other opportunities i have with commands that are going to be very easy to set up much more easy than with command blocks or any generators and whatnot uh first of all we have this house and you can see this blue wool essentially once we hit shift on it which isn't set up yet uh we'll be teleported to a separate area where the house is a little bit larger on the inside which allows me to put NPCs in there and uh, you know shop items and whatnot uh, we also have I think this one's set up as well uh, I was just testing so right now the sign is wrong it says right click with quest items in your hand which is possible uh, I just am not going to do that for the time being because I'm using the shift instead of right click and I have to change that still but once I hit shift it teleports me to the top of this tree which is just an example of how you can move around seamlessly just by looking at a block now an important thing is is that uh, it works off of which block I'm looking at too. So if I'm looking at this block and I hit shift, nothing happens. If I look at the gold block and shift, I can essentially select things, which is something that's very, very hard to do with command blocks unless you're using exact rotation commands on a 20 tick clock. That is not the case here. It's essentially one block that we had to put down and ta-da. I also have this one set up too. Uh, this is going to be the exit to one of the areas. Of course, right now, once you hit shift, you just go onto this tree. Now, an important thing I want to explain to you guys in this video is how this server works. Essentially, once you go into your plot, what you have is three different modes. And with this command right here, the mode build is what I'm in now, and the mode dev or code, they are the same thing. And then there's mode play, which is how you play the game. So if we go into mode dev or mode code, they do the exact same thing. It brings you to the workings behind this map. Now, this is coding without command blocks or any type of generators and whatnot. Essentially, the server uses plugins that allows you to do stuff with very little or no knowledge about how commands even work. So over here, we have a bunch of different things that are all represented by blatantly written signs that I didn't even write. They were just pasted on there as I placed them, which is a very helpful tool. And if we come up here, I can show you how to code something extremely simply, and you can base anything you make off of this basic statement. So right now, anything we do is not going to do anything. It has to start with a player event. And as you can see, down there, it babysits you and says, rows of code blocks must start with a player event. So it starts from over here, and I actually have three layers because I plan on doing a lot more code than just what's down here. Uh, player events are essentially right-clickable. So once you right-click on the sign, it brings up this. Now, a player event states that when a player joins a game, or when a player quits a game, or any one of these statements, right-click detection, left-click detection, respawning detection, sneaking detection, um, if a mob damages a player, odd things like dropping items or consuming food, things that would usually require scoreboards and dummy commands and whatnot, is essentially done by simply 
clicking on it. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Right now we're going to do a player drop item event. And what I have in mind is that when we drop an item, uh, we'll fly into the air, right? That could be used for spells or something like that. I just wanted to show you guys a basic example of how this thing works. So we have player event drop item. Now what we can do, what we can do next is do an if player, a player action, or a game action. Now we're going to do if player because we want to do if a player has a item uh, in their main hand, right, this one right here, or you can choose one of the other ones, such as if the player is sneaking and drops an item, or if the player is wearing a certain thing, such as like magical boots for a quest, and then drops an item, he can fly into the air, or if he's looking at a block, which is how I did that originally up there, with the whole shift detection and whatnot, uh, what I'm going to be using is uh, item in the main hand, yes? And the item in the main hand goes into this chest, so let's go ahead and just put polished andesite into this chest, and then once this is done, if we go up there and then throw it on the ground, we will fly into the air. But we don't have that part in the syntax yet. Now the syntax is these little pistons right here. These are essentially the brackets of the code. Now you don't really even have to pay attention to that at all, considering I didn't know this was brackets until about three hours in and I still managed to do all that stuff. Uh, some admin helped me out. And that's actually something I want to point out too. The admin help here is extremely prominent. We now have to add an action to this. So if we do game action, we can look inside of here, now there's things like spawn mobs and stuff like that. This is essentially what happens if I uh, throw the item, or drop the item, and the item is the item that I'm supposed to have that's been dropped, then something will happen, such as it can explode, right? Or it could play fireworks, it could fill a chest somewhere, uh, it could start loops with command block contraptions that usually require a 20 tick clock, now we can even just set that very simply. Uh, or spawn mobs and whatnot, what we're going to be doing actually is use a player action. A player action is essentially game actions, but just for the player. So such as give items to the player, set armor, uh, change the damage to number, send message, uh, such as the message that you receive when I first joined the game. Uh, you can heal them, enable PvP, launch toward, forward, and upwards. Now I'm going to be using upwards, and pay attention to the number tag that's under the launch upwards. That is important. Essentially, that is the same thing that was also in here as well. If we go over to the item, uh, is holding item, in main hand, it says item or items in uh, the syntax below. Essentially what this means is that's what goes into the chest. So over here, where launch up says number, uh, number is what goes in the chest. So we get those things by going to variable items, right clicking, and we have all these such as text, location, and number. Number is what we need. Now, right now it's like, well what do I do now? I can't just put this slime ball in there. It says number, but it doesn't mean anything. What you have to do is read the number, and it says set the number by typing it in chat while holding this item. And that doesn't seem like it would work, but it does. So if we go ahead and just type a number and hit enter, it changes it to 15. So if we go and put this in the chest, what this code right here says that we built in like, you know, 10 seconds, it says player event, it's when you drop an item and the player is holding this item in their hand, and that's the item they dropped of course, the player action will launch them up 15 blocks. Now this chest has a bunch of polished andesite as well, which is what we're going to be using to put in our main hand. Now if we drop that, we fly into the air and we'll take damage once we land because that hurts. So you can also apply jump boost effects and any type of potion effect as well uh, to stop the effects of things like fall damage and whatnot. Uh, you can also use this as some type of magic where you can fly as well. You can even go really far up in the air if you want. <laughs> so there you go! That's all you have to do to build your own minigame in Minecraft. Without having any knowledge of how command blocks or plugins or any type of server-side things work, it's a very simple process, it gets rid of the lot of the middlemen, such as, you know, searching on the Bible that is the Wikipedia for command blocks and stuff like that for Minecraft. Uh, I've done everything here just out of scratch, out of, you know, the basic knowledge that I've learned just from watching other people, you know, build or building myself through trial and error. Basically, like I said, everything babysits you, it walks you through everything you need to do, and there's a lot of admins and players, such as this random dude just chilling up here, who just pop in and help you with any question you have. But if you guys do have additional questions, uh, initial questions, additional questions, there we go, uh, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below, and also leave a comment saying if you want to see me continue this mini game as well, because I think it would be pretty fun, and you guys can come play it whenever you guys want. Uh, the IP for this server is on the screen and in the description, and that'll allow you to come play this, or, you know, build your own mini game, and leave me, you know, give me a little invite, I'll, I'll come check it out if you want. Uh, but that's all I really have for this video, guys, so uh, I will see you in the next one.